Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about something really exciting and I'm sorry it's a little dark in this intro. I'm actually filming this later in the day, actually after I've already finished this vlog because I didn't know if it was actually going to happen. <laughs> I was unsure if I was actually going to be able to get through this because I decided to read two very impact heavy books and I tend not to like doing that so I didn't know how long this was going to take I didn't know what was going on so uh but I'm very proud of myself because I did finish them so in this vlog you are going to be seeing me read two of Taylor Jenkins Reid's newest releases so this one came out last year and this one came out in 2021 I've been holding on to this one because I didn't necessarily love the premise and then this one I just didn't get yet because I kind of try to read like the book I already have by the author before buying the new one so uh yeah but I ended up finding it at my library and this is the so like this is the library copy I'm going to return it like tomorrow but I ended up getting my own copy because I like having my own copies of books so <laughs> but anyway so yeah I read these and uh we are actually starting with Carrie Soto so if you don't know Carrie Soto is about a famous tennis player who retired young and she has like amazing career she's one of the best ever but a new up-and-coming tennis star is about to break her record or tie it and she decides to come out of retirement and it is just like this montage of training etc and it's just like it sounds really really cool so we are going to jump right into the first clip of me reading this and updating you guys on how i feel about it <laughs> I'm actually doing two vlogs at the same time. Uh, I just DNF'd a book for the other one that's going to be a long-term vlog. I'm doing a taste test of horror books <laughs> and it is uh, not going super well. <laughs> so I just DNF'd that and to cleanse my brain from what I just read, man that book was weird that I DNF'd. Uh, we are going to finally be starting Carrie Soto is back. I am so excited to get back into the world of Taylor, Taylor Jenkins Reid. Her name is so hard for me to say. I do have this from the library. I've already showed it like in the intro, but I'm going to read Carrie Soto's back first because it is my library hold. I own Malibu Rising. So, I mean, if I am enjoying this, I'll get myself a copy because I have, I have Daisy Jones and the Six, which I love the ending. I didn't love the whole book experience, but I love the ending. And then uh, Seven Husbands of Evan Lou Hugo's probably my favorite book like ever so I'm hoping I like these two I did start Malibu Rising when it came out but I wasn't like super interested in what was going on in it so I kind of just put it off so I'm hoping Carrie Soto's back kind of spurs my interest back into like Taylor Jenkins read thing because I am back being interested because I'm watching Daisy Jones right now don't love it, don't love what they did with the characters and the storyline, but it has piqued my interest back into reading her books. So we're gonna start this to cleanse my brain, because uh, I am a bit traumatized after what I read and what I DNF'd. So yeah, we're gonna read this, get started with this at least. This is really long. This seems way longer than her other ones. It says like 300 like 350 pages that doesn't seem that long okay we're gonna get started and i will update you whenever i feel like it literally all i did is read the very intro like basically the prologue what sets up the book for carrie soto and i am already emotional i don't understand how taylor jenkins reed does it i really don't because i'm already like misty eyed a little bit and i'm like ready to go i'm ready to go and there's something that feels so like Oh, just reminiscent of reading Daisy Jones and the Six and Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo the first time that I didn't get when I started Malibu Rising. So I'm definitely glad uh, I'm reading this and I know I'm going to be emotional as heck while reading this book. It's the next morning from when I started this and I'm so proud of myself. I actually did end up reading like 70 something pages of Carrie Soto is Back which is pretty great because I also read 50 pages of another book that I ended up DNFing at 54 pages. And then I also read a little bit of another book. I don't remember what else I read. I read something else. But anyway, I did a lot of reading yesterday, which is really good because my uh, mental health is still not great. 
because of some physical ailments I'm dealing with and trying to go through. So I'm really proud of reading that much. And I feel like Carrie Soto is a really good book so far. <laughs> so I actually read to the first like section. So it seems like it's broken into two sections. And the first 70 something pages is her like original run. When she's a kid and in her 20s, her training regimen, how her dad taught her, and the rift between her and her dad. I do think it rushed a little bit through some sections of it because I really, really enjoyed like learning about her and her dad and their training schedule together. It was really emotional. It was really fun. Her kind of learning more about her dad later, but I feel like when her career started ramping up, um, it definitely like just jumped really far ahead. So I do wish that we had gotten more details because we got a lot of details when she was younger. And then it, when she was actually winning matches, it definitely became sparser and sparser with information. So I do wish there was more in those little sections towards like her, the beginning of her 30s when she ended her, when she went into retirement. I do wish there was more in there because it was like talking about her knees going bad, which you already know. And that's what caused her retirement. But it, and then all of a sudden she was just like, I'm retired. So I wanted more from that little section beforehand, like more of her emotional response to it because she was very emotional throughout the beginning of the book about things. But for that, it just was kind of glossed over. So that's the only thing that I wish there was a little bit more of, but it was still wildly entertaining. Carrie Soto is just like Taylor Jenkins Reid other characters where you are rooting for them and you want to slap them at the same time like there's something that's just so unlikable and likable out about them at the same time she's just like daisy jones she's just like evelyn hugo in the fact that uh, they're like the it girls that you just want to knock some sense into like stop acting a certain way it'll be fine so that's where I ended it, and I'm about to start the section called The Comeback, which seems like the rest of the book. I tried to, like, look ahead. There are sections of, like, her matches, like, names of her matches, which is gonna, I feel like, gonna be really, really cool. Because um, I did, like, how there was a really tense moment where she was in a match with someone, and Taylor Jenkins Reid does a fantastic job of mapping out like matches like keeping it really tense it was really cool so i'm excited to continue with it i'm probably not going to be able to read much more today it is a little bit early it's about 10 o'clock i have work today yay i work at uh i gotta leave the house at one and then i work until i'll get home at like 11 or something and then i also work this weekend so i i am not going to be getting too much done today and over the weekend so I'm gonna have to I don't know me I could I could read a lot this morning I don't know I'm just really excited to continue with this book I'm just I'm more nervous like thinking ahead to Malibu Rising because I don't want Malibu Rising to like ruin my vibe <laughs> right now and my vibe is nostalgia for seven husbands of, of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the six so I'm gonna continue reading Carrie Soto. I will be at work. I will be listening to, ugh, I have some questions for you, which I am so not liking, <laughs> but I'm just so unwilling to DNF it. I have put so much time already in this book. I'm so unwilling to DNF it and I have a lot of work ahead of me. So I don't really need to super pay attention to this book to get through it. So I can just put it on the background while I'm working. And I am training somebody today at work. So depending on how much they're trained, I may just be sitting there for a while, just kind of twiddling my thumbs. So yeah, we're going to see about that. But yeah, so that's what I'm going to do today. I will update you before I go to work if I read any more. If not, you'll probably get an update tomorrow where I'll probably, I should be able to read quite a chunk tomorrow. So that's my update. I'm going to go do things and I'll see you in the next clip. I have so much updating to do. I worked this weekend. I think I already said that I was working this weekend, but it is now Monday morning and I have done 
a lot of stuff actually like I finished two books this weekend I did not think I was going to be doing that Ow. I just took a shower but I didn't want to wash my hair so kind of put it up in a tight bun I try not to put my hair up in a tight bun because I have very thin hair and you can tell it's just like it's just so thin so I'm terrified of it snapping and uh going bald so one of my fears is definitely going bald anyway so haven't done any updating though on here just because I got really lazy this weekend. I actually finished Carrie Soto is Back on uh, Friday. <laughs> I finished it Friday morning and I was like, I'm going to update, I'm going to update, I'm going to update. Never updated. And it's because I just loved it so much that I don't know what to say about it <laughs> uh, other than I actually read a library copy and then uh, bought myself a copy. So this is my brand new copy. I love it. I really kind of want to reread it already because there's just like so much happening in this book but at the same time there isn't. This is why I had such a hard time like thinking about what I was going to say about this book because it definitely, so this is five star. Five star, loved it, made me cry at the end. Also if I look rough it's yeah, I worked last night and I got home late and then I stayed up later to do stuff because when you work a second shift, you don't like have a lot of time to do things during the day. So then a lot of times you end up staying up late and I ended up staying up late watching uh, Ted Lasso with my husband. We're trying to catch up and we're currently, we just started the third season. So anyway, yeah, so five star, loved it. Definitely had seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo vibes but it was not as good and that's and that's like part of me was like oh is it actually like a four and I'm like no Th I love this book much more than many other books and my other five star books uh it's just seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo is probably my favorite book ever like I felt emotions reading that I don't know if I've ever felt before <laughs> uh and I definitely had some of those vibes from here the problem with this one is it did get a bit repetitive towards the middle because of how it was uh, set up. So with Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, the reason it was so compelling, and I read it in one sitting, is because it's husbands. So everything is so wildly different how it's set up. And then you have like interludes of what is the actual important stuff like going on behind the scenes of the husband chapters. And that's what made it so compelling and so quick to read. This is set up as part one, which is like her past, which is only like 70 something pages, which I talked about. And then part two is set up uh, her going to the four slams. So there's a section of her preparing normally like three months out. And then it slowly counts down to the slams. And then it's told in uh, who she's facing at the slams. So I love that. I love when she was at the slams, but the section right before got a little repetitive at probably the third one. So I was kind of like, okay, I'm starting to get a little antsy about it because it's not pushing anything forward as much as like Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo did. But it is unfair. It's unfair to compare books to that book. So taking that out of mind, this is literally amazing. It's so good. Carrie Soto, again, she's like Evelyn Hugo. I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm doing it because more people I feel like have read Seven Husbands. She is very similar to the vibe you get from Evelyn Hugo where like you love her and you want to smack her at the same time. Like I think I, I might have said that in an earlier thing, but she's just like you're rooting for her, but you also want her just to like take a minute and realize what's going on around her. So there's that. I think the romance was really good in this because it was not, it wasn't the sole purpose of this book. So I really like that. It just kind of added an extra layer. Without it, I definitely think it probably would have been a four because it was really important because it, it definitely shaped her character and it made her softer and it made her realize what was going on in life. So he was very, very important to the book. But I think you could have written it without him. I just don't think it would have been nearly as good. So uh, the romance definitely was pretty important in this. He basically turned out to be a main character, with which I love. I also love the fact that there literally are only three main characters in this. It was so like tight onto this little group 
that you really felt all the emotions going on, all of the, just everything going on. It was so phenomenally done that I, it's been a while since I read a book that was like, there's literally only three characters you really need to know who they are. Like, obviously there's other stuff going on with other people, but none of them are like super important. They're definitely like way background characters. They could be named other things. They could be doing other things. It doesn't matter really. What matters are those like, three characters and so the emotional impact of them is heightened because of that so oh I love that I love that <laughs> and that's that's kind of how Seven Husbands was like there's a lot of background characters there's way more background characters in that one but it really is focused on like Evelyn Hugo the real romance and uh one of her husbands was really important because they were like best friends so that's kind of again same similar vibe I feel like this was such a win this was such a win. And now I am terrified because I left Malibu Rising second. And I don't know if I thought that through because now, so I picked this one to go first because I actually thought I'd like this one more. But at the same time, I feel like I should have done this one second because I would like it more. Because I thought I would like read Malibu Rising and maybe not like it and then don't want to read another Taylor Jenkins read. But now I'm having the opposite effect of I liked this so much, I don't want to read Malibu Rising because I don't think I'm going to like it. <laughs> so I'm just like kind of mad at myself for the order because I think I should I should have read Malibu Rising first but uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna start that I don't know if I'm starting it today I did read a whole other book after I read this already so I have kind of cleansed my palette a little bit because it was way different I read a horror book for my horror vlog totally different so I definitely cleansed the palette so I just need to decide what to do. I don't know what to do. Uh, we'll get to Malibu Rising eventually. <laughs> okay, it's Tuesday morning. Just took a shower. It is, well, I guess morning. It's like 11, I think. Uh, my schedule is all messed up from working second shift, getting home really late, and then my husband and I have been staying up really late uh, ever since uh, daylight savings, and it's just, it's messing with me. <laughs> Normally I'd like to be up at like 9.30, but I keep getting up at like 10.30, 11. So I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to fix that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it is Tuesday morning. I am 128 pages into Malibu Rising and it is a lot different than I was expecting actually. I, <laughs> I'm starting to remember how people were talking about it when it first came out, when it came out with like book of the month and everyone was reading it. And I just kept putting it off because people were, not loving it as much as everything else and I had just read Daisy Jones and the Six and I I hated the beginning of that book and then loved the ending so it ended up being like a four star and then so I was just kind of like I don't know if I want to read another one where I'm not gonna love the beginning because a lot of people were saying it's it seems like it's broken up into two parts where part one is like before the big party where we're following Nina Riva and all of her siblings. And then there's chapters that happened in the past that were that are following their parents. So that's actually really interesting. And then the second half of the book is the actual party. So I kept hearing that people would love the beginning and then hate the party or people would hate the beginning because it was boring and love the party. I'm loving the beginning. So now I'm like, Am I not gonna like the party? So now I'm just kind of like suspicious. But anyway, we're we're getting through it. I I don't know when the party actually starts. Oh, I think I'm about less than a hundred pages to part two. So yeah, part two starts at one about one ninety, and I'm at one twenty eight. So definitely under hundred pages. So we're, we're getting through it. And I do plan on actually finishing it today because uh, Mel, Meg with Books and Olivia Reads a Latte are both doing reading sprints on their Patreon. So between the two of them, I should be able to finish this pretty easily because it is a very, very quick read. So a little more about what this book is about now that I, I know what this book is about <laughs> is, like I said, we're following Nina Riva mostly in the present. You definitely skip between her other siblings' points of view. She also has a half-brother, Hud, Hudson, uh, her other brother, Jay, and her sister, the youngest, Kit. 
and Nina's about to throw a really, really, really big party that they've thrown every year. And it's a rough year for her because her husband just left her for Carrie Soto, which was really cool. I'm actually really glad I read Carrie Soto before this. And they bring up Claire St. James uh, that was at one of the parties. So I'm also glad I read Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo before I read this. This is actually really, really cool that they're bringing this up. I like that this came out before Carrie Soto because then the next book came out and you're like, oh my God, Carrie Soto is the one with the husband. I think that's really cool that she planted a character in this book that was her next book was about. That was really cool and really smart. So yeah, so you're following the siblings and their like issues and what's going on. And then the other part of the other main part, like what probably I'm more interested in uh, the beginning is their parents meeting and their relationship and having kids. And it is, oh my gosh, the beginning is very, very heartbreaking. That is one thing I have to say about this. This, while Carrie Soto to me was more reminiscent of Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, this one is more reminiscent to me of Daisy Jones and the Six. Daisy Jones and the Six had this feeling of bad stuff is about to happen. That like constantly for me, Daisy Jones and the Six was like, something bad's about to happen. Something's going wrong. This is what's going to happen. This is kind of how this feels. It's very hopeless and it, it feels like nothing good is about to happen. It feels like everything is just about to be destroyed. While Carrie Soto and Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, to me, had the undercurrents of hope. So I feel like it's kind of separating the two books. But I'm actually, I'm liking this more than Daisy Jones and the Six, at least at the beginning. I haven't gone to the party yet. So we'll see if it holds true that if you like the beginning, you don't like the end. So we'll see. But... Yeah, so that's kind of how I feel about it is it's 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 depressing. This is probably the most unsettling one that I've read by Taylor Jenkins Reid so far just because you just feel like something terrible is going to happen at any moment. <laughs> and it's just sad. Like the relationships are all a mess. The parents relationship literally broke my heart. So, I'm just like Mm, but I'm loving it at the same time. So like I can't I can't put it down. I wanted to read more last night, but I got busy last night. So anyway, those are starting in a couple hours. I'm probably gonna read before then too. I might actually finish my movie that I started yesterday first. And then when reading sprints start, I'll start doing this. I was supposed to go to the library and drop some of my library books off. That is not happening today. I'm putting it off for another day because I also am gonna go sign up for a gym membership, which is super fun. I love signing up for gym memberships. I was a part of uh, Gold's Gym for a while, but they did not keep their facilities up very nice, and it was a pain to cancel. And they're kind of expensive, so it was a big pain to cancel. So I'm just going to do Planet Fitness. We have a really, really nice one uh, up the road that I've uh, checked out. So I just really want a treadmill. That's the thing. We don't have room in our house for a treadmill. Otherwise, I would just get a treadmill. And I do want to use, like, the weights machines because we don't have a ton of weights in the house. But anyway, that's kind of my plan, was my plan for today. Instead, my plan is going to be finishing this up and maybe starting the next vlog, which is either, I don't, I'm deciding between reading Emily Henry or, because I have, I have two Emily Henrys and then, yeah, actually I have one of them right here book lovers. So I have book lovers and people we meet on vacation. So I have that or I have two Colleen Hoovers. I have it ends, what is it? It starts with us? It ends with us? One of those. I think it ends with us. And uh, Verity. So I'm debating which one of those I want to start next. I have not decided yet. I'm kind of frightened of both of them. So yeah, we're gonna see what happens. But I'm gonna continue reading this. Like I said, I am almost to the party, so I will update you. I don't know when I'm going to update you. This may, I may just end. <laughs> I may just finish. But if something happens, I'll update you or if like my feelings start to change, I'll update you. So as you can tell, it is much later in the day. It's getting pretty dark outside now. So the lighting is a bit funky. <laughs> I'm in my library, so there's, just, there's, there's like a huge window, but this time of night, it just gets really dark for some reason. Also ignore the absolute mess that's behind me right now. We're doing some moving around of things. So I finished Malibu Rising. I really didn't have that much more to say about it once the second half started, kind of. I, I definitely saw what people meant about the second half 
not being the best compared to the first half. Like, the people who loved the first half tended not to love the second half as much, and I definitely was in that camp. However, I still actually really very much enjoyed it. <laughs> I really thought it was fantastic. The writing, as always, is really great. I just didn't love the inclusion of all these random stories that were going on in the party. Like, I definitely feel like Taylor Jenkins Reid wanted to make you feel like you were really at this, like, Hollywood party with all these big names. And I just didn't really feel like that was necessary. So there would be random mini chapters of, like, people meeting each other that we hadn't heard about before or rarely spoke about. And I just, I didn't care about that part. I liked the parts where the family was together talking. I liked the family drama that continued from the beginning. And I liked, like, the end. I thought the end was really good. So, in general, I did very much still enjoy it, including the ending. But it was, it was definitely a little lackluster in the second half compared to the first half. But at the same time, I'm glad it didn't continue in the same vein as the first half because this book is wildly depressing. <laughs> like, this is easily, in my opinion, out of the four books that I've read, because like I said at the beginning, I read Daisy Jones, which I also found quite depressing. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo had a hopefulness in it, and then I read Carrie Soto early in this video, which had hopefulness in it. This is probably the most depressing out of the four. It was so sad, <laughs> especially the 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 mom storyline in the first half of the book and it just like nothing happened that really made any of that better like I feel like stuff in the other books happened that made certain things better it softened the blow like the really difficult things and in this it didn't <laughs> nothing softened the blow in this one so this one definitely has me confused when I want to rate it it's not under a four it's it's above a four but I don't know, like, it's not a five. It's not a five. I did not feel the same way about this one as I did as Seven Husbands and Carrie Soto and other five-star books I like better than this. So I feel like it's like, it's either a straight four or like a 4.25. I just, I don't know where I fall because I'm very confused over my feelings because it was really hard. Like this book has me just feeling depressed compared to the others that I read by her. Like, yeah, Seven Husbands like lives inside of me forever. But like I said, there was like this hopefulness, etc. This one, I just felt just like down at the dumps reading parts of it. And I was just like crying every four chapters or something when like emotions got brought up again. So it was just, this was a hard one. This was a really, really hard one to get through. And I feel like this is just like, it was just a dark book for, I feel like some people are probably not going to feel the same way, especially because the party was supposed to kind of liven it up a bit, but it was just sad. It was just sad. Everyone's lives just kind of sucked. And like I said, the ending, Taylor Jenkins Reid, I feel like is really good at writing more hopeful endings. So it does like leave you off on a hopeful note. But like I said, nothing was really done to soften the blow of like the earlier stuff like it's kind of just people moving on so it, it's just hard it's this is why it's really hard to rate this one because I just I feel depressed after reading this one <laughs> so this is definitely not was not as good as Carrie Soto and I've said it before I like following one person better I liked the idea behind Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Carrie Soto because it mostly followed just those two characters with some very important minor characters. While this one and Daisy Jones has a like huge cast of characters. Like there's a lot of people in this book. Like there's the whole family, all their friends, the stuff going on. So this one has a lot of characters in it to follow. And I felt the same pretty much about Daisy Jones and the Six where there was just a lot of people and a lot of things going on. So I definitely feel like those two are more related, like I said, and Carrie Soto and Seven Husbands are more related. So that makes sense kind of how my rating went. But yeah, that's kind of all I have to say about this or there's gonna be spoilers, but it was just sad. This one was just really sad, but I feel like it felt the most realistic though. I felt like it felt the more the most realistic out of all the books that I've read. This felt like something that just happens to celebrities all the time. Oh, and I loved, I loved Carrie Soto in this. She, <laughs> it's really interesting having read Carrie Soto first because there is a section in the second half in the party scene where she comes and she like makes a scene and like does stuff and it's funny because you are seeing her 
from outsider's point of view instead of like right up against like her like so in Carrie Soto you feel bad for her you don't want people to hate her so much you get where she's coming from in this it's you're seeing her as other people see her so it's really funny because the character seems very different in the two books but at the same time very similar so I thought that was really really neat and I love I love that Carrie Soto in this turned out to be the next book I just think that is so 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 cool I'm holding up my library copy but yeah so I these are the two that I read. I definitely would say Carrie Soto is the bigger winner, but they're both winners. They're both winners. And I feel like I've got to read some of Taylor Jenkins Reid's backlist, but I've like read the synopsis of them and I'm just like not that interested in them because they seem like more drama filled, like romance stories. And I like following like the celebrity thing. I think that's why I like these so much is they feel historical fiction and they feel like you're actually following like a celebrity's life. I think that's why I like these so much. So I, I don't know if I'm going to ever do any of her backlist books because they also seem depressing. Like one has to do with a woman whose husband supposedly died and uh, she gets a new fiance years later, but then the husband shows up still alive and she has to decide between the two of them. I know. <laughs> that stresses me out and then the other one is you basically read this woman's life as if it had two directions it could have gone so she like she could have made she had a decision to make and you read if she, uh, she made one decision and you read if she made the other decision and again don't like that stuff either like missed opportunity things just make me sad <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna stick with her current books and like her future books unless I really like hear someone talk about how much they love them. So that is the end of this vlog. I had a fantastic time and I feel like I just proved to myself that this is easily one of my favorite authors. I love these books. They're just so, <laughs> they just rip your heart out. They rip your heart out and they make you feel things because it feels like they're real people and you're just like, oh my god, just there's something about them. There's something about them that is just so good. So I'm really happy I did this. I said I was going to start Emily Henry or Colleen Hoover books after this, and I probably will. I still don't know which one I want to do, but I need a break. <laughs> I am so emotional after reading these two books. I feel like I'm going to go and sink back into the young adult fantasy world for a little bit and then come back and decide w whether I'm going to read Emily Henry or Colleen Hoover because I, I don't think I can legitimately deal with it right now. So anyway, I had a great time reading these books. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I try to keep it as spoiler free as possible. I think I did a good job. I think I did a good job. So make sure to subscribe. Make sure to comment down below on what you guys thought about the books if you read them, if you are planning to pick them up now. Uh, and make sure you like the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>